Today on Locked On Red Wings, what pieces are the Red Wings still missing to become true Stanley Cup contenders? And as well, uh, how do you feel about it Friday? You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I am a podcast producer for WWJ News Radio. Uh, and Scotty is a freelance journalist for the Detroit News, as well as the host of Lockdown Tigers. And today we're going to bring you guys, we want to ask the question, because obviously the Red Wings made some very massive improvements to their roster this offseason, spending a lot of money to shore up a lot of weaknesses. But there's still a long ways from being a genuine bona fide Stanley Cup contender. So we want to ask the question, who are the missing pieces or what are, I guess is a better way of phrasing it. What are the missing pieces? But before we get to that and the, how do you feel about it Friday, Scotty, you brought to my attention before we began recording that Greg Washinsky of ESPN has reported that Adidas will not continue its affiliation with the Detroit Red Wings past the 2023, 2024 season, right? Yes, NHL. That's what I meant to say. The NHL. I guess intern also the Red Wings, I guess. Fair enough. (laughs) No, it it was just a funny thing because we literally just talked about jerseys in the last episode. And then today, Roll Thursday, the day that we're recording this, it was like, oh, like, you know, the new... Uh, like Adidas is no longer gonna gonna be making the jersey, so I just thought it was really funny timing. But it definitely is is interesting. We've seen in sports, like we've seen uh, basketball turn right, like in our lifetimes, we've seen them go from uh, like like switch between Adidas and Nike, and and we've seen it with the NFL. So it's it's just uh, it's fascinating that like you know, hockey's the the next. I, I was going to say victim, but that's way too dramatic. <laughs> but hockey's the next, uh, just the next in line to to swap one way or another between those two. And uh, yeah, well, I guess we, we're we not for sure. We don't know if it's going to be Nike for sure yet, I guess. But um, I, I'm not really sure where else you go if Adidas is breaking your, your partnership. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of the brands that the NHL had partnerships in the past with don't exist anymore. You know, Reebok doesn't necessarily exist anymore. It still exists it's as certainly not big part enough to be Adidas. like Adidas, and it's so certainly not big enough to you know be a whole thing. Yeah. So where do you go from here? I mean, it seems like a lot of people are going to probably guess it's either going to be CCM or perhaps the uh, go back to Nike. I know they had the Nikes back in the I think the nineties, maybe early two thousands. It's hard to keep track of all these jersey brands. But yeah, I know. It would be it'd be interesting to see, but I'm a little bummed to be honest that they're moving away from the Nike jerseys, or I'm sorry, the Adidas jerseys rather, because so, of the fact that I really like this era of NHL I jersey. I think it's a huge improvement on what Reebok brought. Also, listen to this Reebok timeline. Adidas bought Reebok for three point eight billion dollars in two thousand six, and they just sold Reebok literally last summer. To authentic brands for two point five billion, so they lost quite a bit of money on the Reebok brand. I mean, especially once you throw inflation in there from two thousand six to present day, Adidas lost a little bit of money on Reebok. But I regardless, think, I think Adidas is going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think they're going to be all right too. But um, it, it's just like you said, and and like we talked about earlier, it's just a long list of turnover within one of the four major sports and uh people honestly we've seen teams uh, we've seen sports like switch back and forth like in college you see it a ton right because that's like you sponsor a a, a team more like you can sponsor yeah. a, a team like jordan brand with michigan you know like you can sponsor a, a team and we see people flip back and forth all the time so it'll be really interesting i remember when the nba switched their affiliation uh, everybody was super pumped for like what the jerseys were going to look like the first year after. And, uh, and, you know, some of them were super cool and they changed them up. A little. Some of them are also massive flops, I guess, in the same breath. But just an interesting thing, I thought, with the conversation we had 
on uh, on Wednesday's show it was just fascinating that that happened right after we had had that conversation. So, um, yeah, just just an interesting little tidbit, I guess. Yeah. So in the end, we'll see what happens. We still have another two full seasons. Left I don't the think the Red Wings jerseys are changing too much. Let me. Tell I don't you. think they are. I just like them because they're a little bit uh, more tight fitting. I like the material a little bit better than the uh, Reebok jerseys. Reebok jerseys tended to be a little bit more. Um, it's the adjective I'm looking for here. Big, loose, I guess. Big, loose. Thank yeah, you. Loose yeah. is the, the word. Thank you. Um, he's a writer. I'm a and writer so man. he's a writer. So that's that's that. But we don't need to drone on too long about it. It's just the changing of a jersey brand two years from now. Anyway, let's get into the real topic of today's episode. And that that's gonna be, you know, what are the missing pieces in the Detroit Red Wings roster? And there's a lot, admittedly, there is a lot, and I think everyone knows that there's a lot left to be done to make them a genuine bonafide Stanley Cup contender. But let's talk about first then what they don't need. And I think there's really one thing that the Red Wings don't need. And that is a one D true number one defenseman. Cause I think they've already found him in Moritz Sider. Yeah. I, honestly, I think there's a couple things on that list of, of things in terms of don't need, I would say that at, at least you're not looking to, like go out of your way to add in the next couple of years. And I would say definitely a top pair, like true number one, number one defenseman. Um, obviously a captain is, and we are in no need of a captain. We, we have one of those. Hopefully he'll be the captain for the rest of his career. Um, and, and honestly, in the present moment, I would say the Red Wings don't need to go out of their way to add goaltending. I think that that's pretty solidified. I, I think that, they're both young enough as well where they can continue to grow together. And we might get to a point where one of them, uh, whatever, falls off production-wise or, or, you know, is worth too much money. They don't want to bring him in. Well, you know, you have Sebastian Kosa in the wing. So I, I, I guess if you wanted to get super nitpicky, you could say like, oh, but they need a goalie who like you're comfortable in net like 60 to 65 games a year. And, and that's I guess- what I was going to argue is the Red Wings don't necessarily have a true number one starter but the caveat to that scotty is that you don't necessarily need having a number one starter like a vasilevsky is well great it's great to have but you don't need that to win a stanley cup look at the colorado avalanche now colorado avalanche granted are an incredibly deep team everywhere else but they went won it with let's be honest kind of a meh tandem in that for sure well the the other thing is is when you look at age of the goalies we do have and like especially ned like you're you know if it, that there's nothing that says he can't I, you know I'm, I, don't, I don't know if ned's ever going to grow into the talent that's going to win like multiple vesnas or anything but like there's he's still young and has a lot of room he can continue to grow on and as this defense gets better and as he continues to develop there's nothing that says he turns into a, a, a one goalie and if you want to look way down the road again Sebastian Kosa is there, and the belief is that he can be uh, that caliber of player someday too. So uh, as far as when I hear, like, what do the Red Wings need, I'm thinking, like, what outside pieces do they not have in their organization that they need to bring in? And I I would have somewhat faith that between the three goalies that, that are highly regarded within the organization right now, one of them will turn into that quote unquote bona fide uh, you know, top end goalie. If if you really do want that, I I have some faith that we're going to get that without going elsewhere. You know, what else you can get without having to go anywhere. Uh, Built Bar. Built Bars because they're available at Built.com. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor: delicious indulgent cookie dough. Covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. They just keep doing it, Scotty. They just keep doing it. It's so good. They've done it again. It's so good, too, man. Let me introduce you to your new favorite cookie dough. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. All of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are one of, only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to built.com to snag a box for you and your family. It will be the perfect treat. Or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourself. I should have done that because I had made the mistake of putting the box in the pantry. And then I came home the next day and 
the box. So granted, there's only like f- five or six, but they were all gone. So, nice, nice. Not that I didn't do my part though. Uh, <laughs> what's great about Built is that all of their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You are going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or grab a quick bite, Built is the perfect protein bar. Go to Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCKED15. Get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Segment 2, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are talking about the pieces the Red Wings still need to become Stanley Cup contenders. And see, you ended this segment with an interesting point. And I thought at some point in our conversation, it would kind of rise to the surface naturally, and it did. There was going to be a difference in how we consider what the pieces they need. When I thought about this topic, I thought right now in the present, what do they not have on the team? Not necessarily what's in the pipeline, because we can't guarantee what's in the pipeline is going to be that thing. So when you brought up goaltending and Sebastian Kosa, it's good it's a good thought and a good idea that Costa is going to be the number one starter one day but we don't know that so I feel like right now it's still fair to say this team needs a number one goaltender but also acknowledging that Costa could be that guy but that's why I think right now they still need that number one goalie even even if and it could still be Huso and Nedeljkovic but right now in this moment they don't have that and that's what they need they want to compete sure I, I mean yeah that if, you, if you're looking at a one-year window I mean they they don't have a top whatever, five goalie, seven goalie in the NHL. So like if, if, if that's a, if part of your, you know, subjective, like how do you build a team is you need a top five, seven, eight goalie in the league, then like, yeah, we definitely, um, we don't have that, but I think we do at the same breath have a possibility for uh, two goalies that are really, really solid in that and, and pretty highly regarded. Yeah. It'll be a lethal. I think it'll be a lethal tandem, which is a, Good problem to have. For you sure. know, it may not be Shesterkin or Vasilevsky, but like I said last segment, we saw tandems can win Stanley Cups together just this past season. Um, but the biggest thing I think that the Red Wings truly do need that they do not have is that offensive superstar. I think that they don't they don't have it. Now, do I think Raymond has that possibility in him? Sure. Do I think Larkin's got the dog in him? Yeah, I think Larkin would have had, if he would have been completely healthy, probably would have been an 80 plus point player this season. And we saw this past year that sometimes players don't necessarily hit, like explode onto the scene until their late twenties. Huberto just had a 100 plus point season as did Johnny Goudreau. So you look at players like that and it's still possible for Dylan Larkin, but he's not that player yet. If he will ever be, I don't know, but the Red Wings need that true superstar forward if they want to be able to compete, you look at every team that they've had and they've had every team that they had that won a Stanley cup, they've had superstar forwards. And that's the same can be true or the same is true with every team. That's won a Stanley cup in recent memory. Tampa Bay has uh, lots of them. Chicago has Nathan McKinnon. You know, it's just, this is a type of Chicago? player. Chicago during their, their era John, Patrick Kane was insane. Mm-hmm. So th- all of these teams that win Stanley cups need superstars and the Red Wings, unfortunately on, the offensive side of things don't have it. I do think Sider on the defensive side of things can very much become a defensive superstar and, and maybe a little bit biased kind of already is based on his performance last g- season, but they need an offensive superstar. Yeah, no, I, I, if you're looking across really any successful team, uh, I mean, <laughs> what, maybe in the last 20 years, <laughs> like you're talking about uh, having uh, players on the team that are, you know, a hundred plus point in, in a season players. I mean, all, all of the elite teams have that. And, and not only that, but, but all the elite teams have really good depth and, and surrounding casts around them that, uh, could probably take on bigger roles if they were on, you know, worse teams, that caliber of players. So I think when, when, just like we talk about all the time, if we were to add a dude like that, the depth would then indirectly get better because all these other dudes would move down. You know what I mean? So uh, I, I agree with you. I think we, we do have some players either on the team already or in the pipeline that, that might have a chance of being that, but 
uh, at the end of the day, you're talking about the difference between players that have a chance of being that versus like going out and getting a dude who is that, you know, like there's there's a very big difference between those two things. So um, I, I would say that that is and, and look, some people say that that's a one C as well. And there's always a conversation, you know, the Larkin thing is is always talked about and not not, you know, stripping captaincy or anything, but uh being a captain but being a second line center as a captain you know that's something that this fan base has discussed for honestly years at this point and so that's a possibility if you were to get like a huge top end center talent but i mean you go out and get a winger that's a 40 goal scorer right yeah. 50 goal scorer doesn't like, have to be a center right like that's obviously still providing the the same offense from a different position so um, I, I think that there's a lot of different angles they could attack it, but at the end of the day, uh, you're right. That is that is probably the biggest thing that separates us from those those top end top end teams just on paper. I, and I'll say on top of that, the other thing that the Red Wings do still desperately need, and they did improve on it pretty well, but I still think that that defensive core, you know, if you want that team that to be a Stanley Cup contending defensive core. It still needs another huge tune. Oh yeah! Not that I have anything against Olimata or any of the players that they signed. It's just a huge step up. But you could see it in the signings that Iserman made. These were guys besides Sherat who were all, you know, one-year contracts. Olimata was a one-year contract. Mark Pissick was a one-year contract. Robert Hag was a one-year contract. So those are those stream band-aid replacement players. And so you, outside of your top pair, which is going to be Sherat and it's going to be Cider. Your bottom four defensemen, I mean, you still need huge tune-ups in that area. You need somebody you can rely on to be, and I understand there's going to be some modicum of cycle every offseason with players that leave, players that come in, but you shouldn't be replacing half of your decor every offseason. There needs to be, I guess, missing pieces, stability on the back end. That's the best way I can say it, stability on the back end. For sure. No, there, I mean, even when you're talking about, you know, you could say that about any positional group, really. I mean, if you're talking about the, the bottom six wingers, that's not a, we don't have a bottom six of a, of a championship team, like no yeah. disrespect to any of those guys. And, and there is a, a youth that, that is down there at, at certain spots too. Like there's still people holding on to, to faith in Zadina, right? Like he's still super young. And in theory, you're, you're hoping that he takes steps forward. Like there's still, dudes down there that um that could take step steps forward and be that but yeah just like straight up you know like the answer is a lot i mean we yeah. literally talked about on uh on what was it last week we talked about um breaking down the division like we we still have us as you know not even in the top half of our own division and probably one of the better teams to even miss the postseason as a whole this upcoming year so i don't think that this is a, a short conversation. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's probably a, a majority. Majority might be might be dramatic, but a, a large part of of the roster is still took huge steps forward. But we're certainly still a, a far way away from where we want to be. Well, that's exactly it. Is at the end of the day, the team, the roster, at least on paper, took a, like you said a huge step forward. All the signings really improved that roster, but there's still a lot left to be had to make this team truly a Stanley cup contender. Um, when we come back, we'll do a little bit of how do you feel about a Friday to send us into the weekend. Segment three, locked on a red wings podcast. Scotty, we're going to do a, how do you feel about a Friday now? And I think my first question for you is how did you feel about my new business cards? I wish I would have brought my wallet upstairs. I'd have pulled it out. They were slick, man. The logo is is. You were really not even. That was not creative. even the logo. Those three lines were not the logo. That was just flair. Great flair, man. Great flair. I, I was I was impressed with the flair. It's it's literally just four lines that are just straight, vertical lines. They're not even in a row. They're just kind of like scattered. Hey, it's good though. It looks good. Do you have a business card? <laughs> no, I, these days, currently, I do not, no. Well, I'm a professional, so hey, lay off. I said they were nice. They're very <laughs> nice. They're very I, nice. What's I, interesting, I just, you know. the title, my, my title's weird. 
It's podcast assistant producer. And that doesn't roll off the tongue quite as well as assistant podcast producer. Are you the assistant to the podcast producer? No, I'm not the assistant to the podcast (laughs) producer. I'm just the second podcast producer of our team of two. Got it. So I got the assistant in the name. It sounds like the word two is in the name as well. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Scotty, watch The Office, guys, in case you didn't know. (laughs) Well, you, I mean, that was the number two, but yeah. Yeah, they did look good though. For real, they did. Thank you. What do you got? Uh, how do you feel about? He's looking around his room. <laughs> uh, Fago. I love Fago. Fago's great. Rock and Rye all the way. Favorite flavor? Rock and Rye. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's the that's the best. Red that's Pop's good too. Classic. But yeah, Rock and Rye's that's that's good. I uh, I I like Red Pop. I also like the um, the orange the orange i you know what's funny is i had never had a fago until just this past year i went my entire life without having a fago before that's crazy i was always a coke guy i love coke yeah but so it was like different yeah i I know it's different and i finally tried it when we had run out of coke at the radio station because we have fago (laughs) i was like i'll try the fago i can't believe you lived you lived in the state of michigan your entire life and it took you until your mid-20s to try a fago we were a coke family man that's we were a, Co- wild, we were a Coca-Cola dude. family. I got to stop saying it like that. We were a Coca-Cola family. <laughs> <laughs> Just not realizing what I've been saying this whole time. We were a Coca-Cola family. That's crazy, dude. That's like, I don't know. That's just wild to me. Living in Michigan and going that long. That's that's uh, that's an impressive feat, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, I know. Everyone's really impressed when I, when I tell them that story. They'll go, wow, you're so impressive, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I think people say that a lot. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the fact that the Tigers tied a game in the bottom of the ninth thanks to Riley Green and then plunked two players to score runs to lose the game? I mean, like, whatever. Like, honestly, it's it's so – I'm so numb to the losing at this point. And, like, it's it's just like, yep, that that tracks. I'm, honestly, my, my biggest thing is uh, the next, you know, five, six days is just going to be – all day and night trade deadline stuff and keeping my my ear to the pavement with that so that's going to be my most of my uh days for the next whatever five days is just a lot of trade deadline stuff uh, would you rather do five days of just horrible baseball but like having content every single day or doing three days of lockdown red wings where it's just like nothing in this season um Currently, I would I I still would take the content every day, but it's terrible baseball. But the only wow, reason he hates like, me. No, no, no. The only reason right now that it is just because, like I said, of the trade deadline. Like I don't have to talk about the game if I don't want to, and I can fill a show because of all the rumors and like who's gonna get moved and like the people like we're gonna trade like most of our bullpen. Like there's we're gonna make trades and probably so. Tarek Skubal. How do you feel about Tarek Skubal? Yeah, I don't think that's a probably. I would say that's that they're taking calls on him. I don't think that's like a probably going to happen thing. I think that's I know, like man. a like a like more of a might than a probably. I hope they don't like what it. What is the purpose? You're like you're trading away a piece of your rebuild to then what get more pieces for the rebuild? Like Terra Scoobles a bona fide, like actual genuine has like Cy Young caliber talent. I know he's struggling right now. He wasn't helped at all by the fielding the other day, but I know, I know he's struggling right now, but at the start of the season, you saw Tarek Skubal and what he can do. That's Tarek Skubal. And so you're going to trade the one good thing you have going for you to get more pieces to make this seven year rebuild, take it any longer. I don't understand. Well, how Avila has a job. Yeah. Well, that's honestly, that's a different, I don't even consider those like related topics. Like Avila just should be gone just because, but um, like when your team is 20 games under 500, like I, I'm of the belief you should probably listen to calls, which is what the article stated on everybody. I'm fine with that. You probably should. This team's terrible. We are 20 games under 500. Um, and the thought is we've got pitching from a lot of players. The pitching has been solid, even though it's been hurt. It's been solid. We have found a way to manufacture, a, a decent rotation, even with a bunch of guys getting called up and, and Band-Aid pitchers and all sorts of stuff. So the, I think the, the thought is 
you trade Tarek Skubal when his value is unbelievably high because of all the reasons you just said, and he's a lefty, and he has four years of team control, and he's already blown his arm out and gotten Tommy John, so the odds of him having it again are statistically a lot smaller. Like he's 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 he would be the probably the most valuable pitcher on the starting market if we starting pitcher market if we were just like hey we're definitely trading him um and and the thought is we have one of the worst offenses we've ever seen we have the worst offense in baseball by a pretty legitimate margin we have one of the worst like runs per game since uh, like the 19 what i don't forget what they said 1970s at this point like it, it's really bad uh so i think the thought would be you know trade a really valuable dude that plays once every five days for a bunch of young bats that several young, not a one for one. You would never do that. But you know, if you could get two or three guys that are on the cusp of making the majors or like rookies or first year guys that are good hitters and, you know, have trade Scooble for three young dudes with a lot of control that have good potential. That yeah, play but do you trust Avila day. to make that trade? No, and that's what it always comes back to. No, absolutely not. You don't trust him to make any trade or any move, period. But the all, all I'm saying is the the what again when you're 20 games under 500, like that's this isn't just like oh like this season didn't go as planned. This is a catastrophic failure. We yeah. could win. We could win. We could improve our win total next year by 20 games and be 500. Like that is. You know, and, and teams don't improve their win totals by 20 games <laughs> like that. That doesn't happen. It's, it's more of a slow incline most years than not. It, those are anomalies. So uh, it, it's just like when your team is this bad and, and your offense is that bad. The logic I'm saying is not like beyond the stupidest thing in the world. It's just the execution and, and the fact of who's running the team. And yeah. That's who is determining your return. That's the part that rightfully scares everyone. And uh, again, this is all, in my opinion, for not. I, I don't think he's getting moved. Hope I hope not. I, I, I would be shocked, honestly. Even with the article and the news and everything, I would still be shocked if he was moved. I think that's much more of a older oh, listening at the, to offers for everybody than I like. They're actively trying to move him. I don't think they're actively trying to trade Scoob. I think they're just listening to calls on him and. I'd be shocked if they got one that matched their uh, standard. How do you feel about the show, The Boys? Uh, I have only watched a few episodes in season one, but I've heard it's great. I have family that watches it. I just started watching it on Wednesday night. I stay up too late. You can actually kind of see it if my eyes are a little bit red. We are recording this Thursday evening after I got home from work. I'm tired because I stayed up too late watching it. I uh, saw two episodes. I'm only two episodes into the boys, but I've been really enjoying it so far. So it seems, I mean, at this point, even the subversion of the trope about superheroes isn't even unique anymore. I mean, we've seen that before already, but it's still fun. It's still executed well. So I, I like, I'm liking it a lot so far. Amazon did a good, good job with this show. It seems, I don't know how it goes from here. I've heard it's good, but season one so far is pretty interesting. Yeah, I have family that loves it. And like I said, I only saw a, f I don't know, three or four episodes when it like the f of season one when it first came out. So I'm far from an expert, but I, I have friends and family that bother me all the time to to watch it because they think it's really good. Well, I'm just glad that someone's bothering you, not just me. You don't bother me. Oh, good. That's sweet of you. Uh, do you got anything else or? Um. No, I don't think so. I love that <laughs> you're physically looking around the room. <laughs> I didn't come prepared for how do you feel about a Friday? How, how do you feel about mug root beer? Great. Absolutely fantastic. It's my, my, my go-to. Although I'm not. How do you feel about diet pop? Because I'm going to be honest with you. When it comes especially to root beer, I prefer diet root beer over regular root beer because regular root beer is too sweet. No. The yes. only no, the only diet that's better, the only diet that's better is McDonald's Diet Coke. That's the only diet that that gets a pass. Everything else, the regular is better. Diet Coke, McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's Coke, I would understand, but Diet Coke from McDonald's specifically. McDonald's Diet Coke is like S tier drink. Yes, more like S tier. Ayo. 
What? You're the one that said you preferred <laughs> diet. What do we? You're the. It's, it's just because it's your, your opinion. Side. It's your opinion. That's it's why. actually yours, though, is the crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every single day. Uh, and I'll make your second listen Locked On NHL. Uh, Locked On NHL gives you a daily 30 minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily 30 minute podcast. Oh, man. Any final, th- <laughs> any final thoughts? We ball. We ball. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. Same time, same place. It's your team three days a week. Every almost day. <laughs>